Archbishop Vigano, Bergoglio's blessings, four homosexual couples, show he is a servant of Satan. LifeSite News, when the devil tries to persuade us to sin, he emphasizes the supposed good of the evil action he wants us to do, while overshadowing the aspects that are necessarily contrary to God's commandments. He does not say to us, sin and offend the Lord who died for you on the cross, because he knows that a normal person does not want evil in itself, but that he usually does evil under the appearance of good. This strategy of deception invariably recurs. To induce a mother to have an abortion, Satan does not ask her to be pleased with the killing of the child she is carrying, but to think about the consequences of pregnancy, the fact that she will lose her job, or that she is too young and inexperienced to raise and educate a child, and it almost seems that that mother, by making herself a murderer through infanticide, shows a sense of responsibility in wanting to spare the innocent creature a life without love. In order to convince a man into adultery, the tempting spirit shows him the supposed advantages of finding an outlet in an extramarital affair, all to the benefit of peace in the family. To urge a priest to accept the heretical deviations of his superiors, he emphasizes obedience to authority and the preservation of ecclesial communion. Read, prominent canon lawyer Fr. Murray excoriates New Vatican Doc endorsing blessings of gay couples. These deceptions obviously serve to drag souls away from God, to erase grace in them, to stain them with sin, to obscure their conscience in such a way that the next fall is all the more casual the more serious it is. In a way, the action of the devil is expressed as the Overton window, making the offense against God less horrible, making us believe that the punishment that awaits us is less terrible, and the consequences of our guilt more acceptable. The Lord is good, He forgives everyone, He whispers to us, taking care to keep us away from the thought of Christ's passion, from the fact that every blow of the scourge, every slap, every thorn stuck in His head, every nail driven into His flesh is the fruit of our sins. And then, if you give in to temptation, it's not your fault, it's your frailty. And once sunk, sin after sin, in the habit of evil and vice, the soul allows itself to be dragged lower and lower, until the devil's request presents itself in all its horror, rebel against God, reject him, blaspheme him, hate him because he has deprived you of your right to happiness with oppressive precepts. This, on closer inspection, is the recurring element in temptation, ever since Adam's sin to show evil under false appearances of good, and good as an annoying obstacle to the fulfillment of one's rebellious will. The Church, who is our mother, knows well how dangerous it is for a Christian soul to ignore this infernal strategy. Confessors, spiritual directors, and preachers considered it essential to explain to the faithful how the devil acts, so that they might understand with their intellect the fraud of the evil one, so as to be able to oppose it with their will aided in this by assiduity in prayer and frequent use of the sacraments. The delirious declaration Fiducia Supplicans, recently published by the parody of the former Holy Office, renamed the Dicastery, definitively pierces the veil of hypocrisy and deception of the Bergoglian hierarchy, showing these false shepherds for what they really are, servants of Satan and his most zealous allies, beginning with the usurper who sits an abomination of desolation on the throne of Peter. The very incipit of the document sounds, like all those issued by Bergoglio, mocking and deceptive, because trust in God's forgiveness without repentance is called the presumption of salvation without merit and is a sin against the Holy Spirit. Read, SSPX Superior General, Vatican approval of same-sex blessings, accelerates the loss of souls. The false pastoral solicitude of Bergoglio and his courtiers with regard to adulterers, concubinaries, and sodomites should be denounced first of all by the presumed beneficiaries of the Vatican document, who are the first victims of sulfurious conciliar and synodal Pharisaism. It is their immortal soul that is sacrificed to the woke idol, because on the day of the particular judgment they will discover that they have been deceived and betrayed by those who on earth hold the authority of Christ. The fault that the Lord will accuse these unfortunate people of will not only concern the sins committed, but also and above all in having wanted to believe in a diabolical lie, in a fraud of false pastors, starting with Bergoglio and Tucho, that conscience had shown them as such. A lie that many members of the hierarchy want to believe, who hope sooner or later to be able to receive the same blessing together with their accomplices in vice, ratifying that sacrilegious and sinful lifestyle that they already practice, and with the ostentatious consent of Bergoglio.
The fact that Tucho Fernandez's declaration approved by Bergoglio reiterates that blessing an irregular couple ought not to seem like a form of wedding rite, and that marriage is only between a man and a woman, is part of the strategy of deception. For what is at issue here is not whether marriage can be contracted by two men or two women, but whether persons living in a gravely sinful state can merit, as an irregular couple, a blessing imparted by a deacon or a priest, with the sole precaution that it is not to give the impression of being a liturgical celebration. The attention of the Vatican Sanhedrin is entirely directed to reassuring the Christian people that they have no intention of formalizing new forms of marriage, while the state of mortal sin and grave scandal of those who would receive such a blessing, and the danger of eternal damnation that weighs on those poor souls, is totally overlooked. Not to mention the social impact that this declaration will have on those who are not Catholic, and who thanks to it will consider themselves entitled to much worse successes. One wonders whether, in this race to legitimize sodomy obtained without going so far as to celebrate marriages between sodomites, there is a conflict of interest in those who propose it so insistently, it is as if rulers protected themselves with a legal shield against liability before imposing on the population an experimental gene serum about whose adverse effects they are not unaware. There is no doubt about it. It is a rude awakening for the so-called conservatives, who find themselves blatantly mocked by Prefect Tucho, who worries that the blessing of a couple should not look like a marriage, but has nothing to say about the intrinsic sinfulness of public concubinage and sodomy. The important thing is that the moderates, defenders of Vatican II, can consider themselves satisfied with that Jesuitical apostle, in this case that these spontaneous and non-ritual blessings are not a marriage, that is supposed to save the doctrine on the papacy while pushing souls to damn themselves. For priests who do not agree to bless these unfortunate people, two paths are being prepared, the first, to be expelled from the parish or from the diocese ad nidum pontificis, the second, to resign themselves to bartering their right to dissent in exchange for the recognition of the right of other confers to approve, something already seen in the liturgical field with summum pontificum. Read, Father James Martin Blesses Homosexual Couple at Jesuit Residence in New York City. Added to this is the scandal for Catholics, who, in the face of the horrors of the sect of Santa Marta, are tempted to embrace schism, or to abandon the church. Let us ask ourselves, what does Bergoglio want to achieve? Nothing good, nothing true, nothing holy. He does not want souls to be saved, he does not proclaim the gospel opportunely importunately to call souls to Christ, he does not show them the scourged and bloodied Savior to spur them on to change their lives. No. Bergoglio wants their damnation, as an infernal tribute to Satan and a brazen challenge, to God. But there is a more immediate and simple purpose to be achieved, to provoke Catholics to turn away from his church and leave him free to turn it into the concubine of the New World Order. Women priests, gay blessings, sexual and financial scandals, the immigration business, forced vaccination campaigns, gender ideology, neo Malthusian environmentalism, the tyrannical management of power are the tools with which to scandalize the faithful, to disgust those who do not believe, to discredit the church and the papacy. Whatever happens, Bergoglio has already achieved his goal, which is the premise for securing the consent of heretics and fornicators who recognize him as Pope ousting any critical voice. If this document, together with other more or less official pronouncements, really had as its purpose the good of adulterers, concubinaries, and sodomites, it should have pointed out to them the heroism of Christian witness, reminded them of the self-sacrifice that our Lord asks of each one of us, and taught them to put their trust in God's grace in order to overcome trials and live in conformity with His will. On the contrary, He encourages them, blesses them as irregular, as if they were not, but at the same time he deprives them of marriage, and in this way admits that they are irregular. Bergoglio does not ask them to change their lives, but authorizes a grotesque farce in which two men or two women will be able to appear before a minister of God to be blessed, together with their relatives and friends, and then celebrate this sinful union with a banquet, the cutting of the cake, and gifts. I wonder what's going to prevent this blessing from being imparted not to a couple, but to several people, in the name of polyamory, or to minors, in the name of the sexual freedom that the globalist elite is introducing through the UN and other subversive international organizations. Will it suffice to point out that the Church does not approve of polygamous unions and pedophilia to allow polygamists and pedophiles to be blessed?
And why not extend this gimmick to those who practice bestiality? It would always be in the name of welcoming, integration, inclusiveness. Read, Pope's homosexual blessings document pretends to be magisterial teaching, but is not. The same diabolical falsification is taking place for women priests. If, on the one hand, the Synod on Synodality did not address the ordination of women, on the other hand, a form of non-ordained ministry is already being planned that would allow them to preside over spurious celebrations under the pretext that there are no more priests and deacons. Also in this case, the faithful see on the altar a woman in an alb reading the gospel, preaching, distributing communion, just as a priest would do, but without being one. It is done with the Vatican footnote that it is a ministry that does not call into question the Catholic priesthood. The hallmark of the conciliar and synodal church, of this sect of rebels and perverts, is falsehood and hypocrisy. Its purpose is intrinsically evil, because it takes away God's honor, exposes souls to the danger of damnation, prevents them from doing good, and encourages them to do evil. Those in the Bergoglian Church who continue to follow the doctrine and precepts of the Catholic Church are out of place and sooner or later will end up separating themselves from it or giving in. The Catholic Church is the only ark through which the Lord has ordained the salvation and sanctification of mankind. Wherever what appears to be the Church acts and works for mankind's damnation, it is not the Church, but rather her blasphemous counterfeit. The same is true of the papacy, which Providence willed as a bond of charity in truth, and not as an instrument to divide, scandalize, and damn souls. I exhort all those who have been awarded the dignity of cardinal, my brothers in the episcopate, priests, clerics, and faithful to oppose most firmly this mad race towards the abyss to which a sect of renegade apostates would like to force us. I implore the bishops and ministers of God, by the most holy wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only to raise their voices to defend the immutable teaching of the Church and to condemn deviations and heresies, under whatever appearance they may appear, but also to warn the faithful and prevent these sacrilegious blessings in their diocese. The Lord will judge us on the basis of His holy law, and not on the Pharisaic seductions of those who serve the enemy. Plus, Carlo Maria Vigano, Archbishop. December 20, 2023. Feria 4 Quatuor Temporum Adventus.